The Jets have begun their free agency period with the offensive lineman we all thought, George Fant. What? J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Guys, if you missed it, our Monday call-in show, I had a Patriot fan, a Bills fan, and Matt O'Leary join me. It was a lot of fun. We actually caught the George Fant uh, reaction live. We were all a little confused about it. But don't forget to tune in tomorrow, Tuesday, at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. We're going to be doing our live call-in show with O'Leary, Greenbean, and David. So we're going to be talking all the Jets free agent news. Lots of fun. I think we had about 400 people in the live stream last night or tonight. Uh, and I expect just about as much tomorrow night. So make sure you tune into that. All right, George Fant from the Seattle Seahawks. The player no one has any clue about. <laughs> and I think the person who said it best is one of my buddies over on the Jet Nation forums, Teddy, who said, as soon as I'm done Googling him, I'll return with a strong opinion on this. Please wait. And that's basically my kind of take. I didn't really know anything about George Fant until I started doing a little bit deeper dive into him. He's 28 at the start of this season, or roughly the start of the season. Six foot five, 322 pounds. And we gave him a three-year, $30 million deal with $13.7 million guaranteed. And I got to admit, I'm pretty frosted. <laughs> of all the guys we could have gotten in free agency, you know, a lot of us were in on the Jack Conklin train. He wound up going to the Browns on a $20 million first-year deal. He's got $30 million guaranteed over three years. So on face value, it looks like he got $14 million versus the $10 million we just paid George Fant. But keep in mind, $20 million for Jack Conklin after the new TV deal is struck, he's probably going to hold out and get a way bigger contract. So that deal is a little bit deceiving. It's not actually $14 million versus $10 million. The Jets' $13.7 million deal that they just gave Fant is probably going to be a one-year deal, and you can cut him after one year. The, honestly, if you're looking at it, and I know $10 million a year sounds like a lot for this guy, and it probably is but look at it we are the jets and we don't really attract top free agents without overpaying them so joe joe douglas is definitely taking a different route than mccagnon did the last two years some of the other offensive linemen that got signed today that we can talk about you got uh joe thuny the patriots guard that we all really wanted and you know he got the franchise tag so we didn't even get a shot to go after him you had Vitai, the eagles offensive lineman got five years 50 million dollars so imagine the guy that you know, we might be upset with Fant at $10 million over three years, but they just got Vitai, who is essentially kind of like the same sort of player, but they got him for five years. So a little bit frustrating, or maybe not a little bit of a, uh, a light spot, maybe. <laughs> uh, Flowers, Eric Flowers, former New York Giant who moved from tackle to guard and has actually seen a pretty good increase uh, in his player stock. Signed with the Dolphins on a $10 million a year contract. The player that I am frosted about, though, one that I'm pretty upset about, is Graham Glasgow going to the Denver Broncos on a four-year, $44 million deal. I thought that was somewhere that the Jets really could have uh, improved. He plays guard and center, and I think the Jets should have been the highest bid for that. I'm a little upset that they didn't get that. A little bit more on Fant. Uh, we can get into this. Michael Nania, if you don't follow him, he's a pretty big Jet fan and posts a ton of stuff on Twitter. Real good follow. He says he was 75th out of 84 qualifying tackles in pass blocking efficiency this year. 20 total pressures, two sacks, two hits, 16 quarterback hurries for a total of 20. Over 201 snaps, that's a 10% rate. That was worse than Shell and Edoga. Now, when we look at his pro football focus grades, he had a 42.8 in 2016, a 73.8 in 2018, and he took a little bit of a dip in 2019 with a 60.6. And it's a little frustrating. He was the 57th ranked tackle. He was worse than Shell and worse than Beecham, according to Pro Football Focus. But he was better than Edoga, so maybe we got a little bit better there. Um, man, I have to admit, I this is bittersweet. It's not someone I really wanted. I, I have to have faith in Joe Douglas. The guy comes highly rated from a lot of different areas. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously, Ozzie Newsom speaks very highly of Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas was a former offensive lineman. So he does know his offensive lineman here. And as much as I feel like I should know <laughs> that this is like a bad signing, I, 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 have to, I have to take a step back and realize this is a different GM than Mike McCagnon. We're taking a different route. We went overboard in free agency the last two off seasons. How did the Tremaine Johnson contract wind up turning out? 
How did the Le'Veon Bell contract turn out? How did the C.J. Mosley contract work out? We paid the guy $17 million who sat on the bench all year. So maybe it's time to start looking at these lower tier, second tier kind of free agents in fan. And when I did a little bit of research, I came away with uh, an interesting sort of uh, takeaway. So they're, they're going to try and use him in what's known as wide line splits. And I didn't really know what this was. I had to look into it. And it's basically all about the math and the physics. So I'll put some graphics up on the screen, but basically when you have a certain distance, say one foot between each of your offensive linemen, uh, you can get to the quarterback in X amount of time. If you make that three feet across each foot of the offensive lineman, that creates a longer distance to get to the quarterback. So purely based on you know distance to quarterback from the edge rusher, there's going to be a slightly bigger uh, time frame that you're going to have to cover, slightly bigger distance that you're going to have to cover. So naturally, it's going to create more time for the quarterback to throw. So even though he's not a necessarily a better pass blocker or a better run blocker, you can use some tricks to actually get around some of these hurdles. So you actually generate about a quarter of a second more on each pass on, I think it was a three foot or a three step drop. And then in the running game, when you separate those linemen just a little bit more, that creates larger gaps for the running back to run through. So this is something that Le'Veon Bell could possibly take advantage of. It's something that we could see uh, some of maybe a, a late round running back come in and take advantage of. So I think there's some benefits to this guy. I'm very leery of it. I don't know how to feel. It's kind of a little bit of a kick in the taint. <laughs> if you ask me, I definitely, oh man, I really, I didn't want, I want, I just wanted some big names. That, that's, that's just me. I know a lot of Jet fans wanted big names. I'm not super sold on this guy. I think the Jets are like do have a lot more moves planned. I think we're going for a quantity over quality type of approach. I think when you try to pay for quality, you wind up overpaying for players like a Le'Veon Bell, like a Tremaine Johnson, like a CJ Mosley. When you take some of these second or third tier guys, they're fighting for their job. You have them for a year. And if you don't like them, you cut them afterwards with pretty limited dead cap hit. Guys, let me know what you think of everything down below in the comments. What do you think of George Fant? Were you as perplexed as I was? Um, are you still perplexed? Do you feel a little bit better? Do you feel a little bit worse? Who do you want that's still remaining out there in free agency? Tune into our live stream tomorrow, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Me, Green Bean, O'Leary, and Gangrene David. And we are going to take your phone calls to answer all your questions. So I'll see you there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, go Jets.